In this video, I'm gonna teach you about non-dimensional interaction diagrams. They are crazy important for designing reinforced concrete columns. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University, and I'm a concrete lover. This crazy looking diagram is a non-dimensional interaction diagram. If you have to do column design, it will become your friend. On this diagram, this is the axial load, but it's divided by BH. This is like the axial stress, the average axial stress on the column, the axial load divided by BH. This down here, this, 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 is your moment normalized by BH squared. Or if it's a circular column, it may look a little bit different. Um, this is normalized by the dimensions of the cross section. And you can see these numbers go you typically from zero to one. And these numbers down here go from zero to about four. And there'll be different versions of these. Now, do you see multiple lines here? Line, 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 different lines. Every line is what's called row G. This is the area of steel, steel total divided by BD. This is like the reinforcement ratio, 5%, 4%, 3%, 2%, 1% when it comes to a column. Now, I'm gonna tell you exactly how these things work. When, if you have a cross section that fits a diagram, and we'll talk about how you know if it fits, it has to do with this criteria up here, but if you establish that you fit the diagram, then what you have to do is you come in here with your moment divided by your cross section down here, your moment divided by your cross sectional information and your axial load divided by your cross sectional information. You'll come in here and you'll plot a point. Let's just say I plotted a point here. Now, what I will do then is I will go and I will look and see what row diagram. If I would have picked a row diagram, if I have my point here, and I would have picked a row here of 1%, that's not large enough. That's not enough. If I picked a number of 2%, that's fine. Yes, everything is good. But I could even pick a number in the middle, maybe 1.5%, somewhere in the middle. If that helped me save some steel, that would be fine because that would be an interpolation between these two points. People love to say, how do I know exactly where it's at? How do I know exactly where it's at? It's okay, it's okay. Just get close or be conservative and go a little bit higher than that and pick out whatever value you need. Now, the most challenging thing about a non-dimensional interaction diagram is to figure out which one you need. I'm gonna give you a whole host of them. In the area below, in the notes section, you need to download these, they are powerful. Now, how you decide is you look up here. You look and see what your concrete strength is, what your steel strength is, and what this gamma is. I'll get to gamma in just a second. And you also look and see to make sure this matches your cross section. This is a rectangular cross section that has steel all the way around the outside. Now, how do we get gamma? How do I find gamma? Let's go down here to the bottom. Now what gamma is, it's this. Let's zoom in here a little bit. What gamma is, is it is the center to center distance from the steel in extreme tension or compression. So it's this distance from here, center of that steel to center of that steel. That's called gamma H. Anyway, it's that value divided by H, the entire height, which would be H. So it's kind of the percentage of, or <coughs> the ratio of how close our steel is to the outside. Some people say, well, don't want, we want our gamma to be high? We want our gamma to be whatever our gamma is, all right? We want it to be whatever it is and nothing more. Now, one tip with gamma when you're using these diagrams is you always round down. That means if I if I found a gamma of 0.65, but my nearest or my nearest chart is 0.60, and maybe there's another one at 0.7, I always round down. You never round up with gamma. Now, you could try to interpolate between the charts, but that's usually too much trouble. Now, there are two more tricks I'm gonna give you because I've just told you how to use a non-dimensional interaction diagram. It will make more sense once we work an example problem, but you still need to figure out what size column 
you need to use. And that's not trivial, but I'll give you two tricks to show you how to do it. So columns can see a little, little overwhelming, but um, we need the first step is to get a guess. Yes, a guess at what the cross section is. And sometimes that guess is wrong, but you have to get started with something. So what we're going to do, if we think of a typical interaction diagram that looks something like this, and we've divide, designed one together and plotted one together, and, and what you might notice if you did a lot of them, I know you don't like what we did, it was painful, so you might not want to do a lot of them, but if you did a lot of them, you would find that this kind of nose point is about one third of the total height. This nose point right here, right, this kind of crossover between ductile and brittle, Everything above here is what? Oh yeah, brittle. And everything below here is what? Oh yeah, ductile. And what this shows you is, is that this kind of breakover point is right about one third PO. So we're gonna shoot to put our, our column about there or maybe a little bit lower. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this PO value, divide it by three. This is gonna give us a good estimate of the balance point. So I plugged in here, this is the PO value that we talked about before, divided by three. Plug in here for typical numbers, um, usually using 1% steel. We would find out that this row balance magical point would be 1.03 area gross. Or what this means is that a good estimate of my cross section in square inches, would be what my load is, my axial load is on my column in kips, where area gross is in inches squared. That means that if I had a thousand or a hundred kips, a good estimate for the size of my column would be a hundred inches squared. What? Pretty cool, huh? Make sure this is the factored load not the unfactored load, but as long as you use the factored load here, this gives you a great estimate if axial load controls. So therefore, if one, if, if one uses a column with an area equal in square inches equal to the factored axial load, it should put your design very, very close to the balance point. But now, there are times when moment dominates your column. It can happen. And if this doesn't work, if this same trick I showed you here doesn't work, then if that doesn't work, what you can do is you can make this moment, your factored moment, divided by BH squared or whatever value is on the x-axis in the non-dimensional interaction diagram, and you can force that to be about 0.5. I know this probably seems really confusing right now, but what I've just told you is some super awesome secret weapons. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments below. I promise you, this will make more sense once you work some example problems. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.